in the market for a used car or truck, don't forget your bottle of water. Yes, I know. That's a really odd statement to start a video with. But really, I never go car shopping without a bottle of water. But it's not for drinking. Water is one of the simplest diagnostic tools you will ever see. And I'm about to show you how to use it. Now, most people will tell you that before you ever start a car that you are looking at, you first open the hood, make sure the engine is cold, then check the fluids and give the engine a look over for leaks and anything else that looks wrong. But while I'm doing all that normal stuff, I'm also pouring a little water in my hand and rubbing it on the exhaust manifold. Now, for those that don't know what an exhaust manifold is, it's the pipe attached to the engine where the hot gases come out of each cylinder, mix, and go out through the tailpipe. Sometimes they look like this header, and sometimes they just look like a big hunk of rusty metal like this. Either way, the bottom half, where the pipes come together, I don't really care about. The top part, right where it bolts the engine, is all I care about. That part heats up from the hot gases coming out of that cylinder. And only that cylinder. When the engine is running perfectly, all of those points will heat up at the exact same rate. If one cylinder is not running as strong, it will take longer to heat up. And a cylinder that is misfiring will blow cold air out, keeping it from warming up at all. Now to show you how this works, here is the right manifold on a Ford 534 cubic inch Super Duty V8 that I'm currently working on. All it takes is a little bit of water rubbed on the manifold. Now that the engine is running, remember we only care about the point where it bolts to the engine. The main block will dry in seconds, but that tells us nothing. Notice the middle two cylinders dry almost as quick as the main block. The left being a little bit quicker than the right. The cylinder on the far right of the camera eventually starts drying off, which means it's still working, but not like it should be. But the cylinder on the far left of the camera is completely dead. The port is still shiny wet. Also another use of the bottle of water is to hold it against the intake or other parts of the engine that are cold and watch the waves that form in the water. I have actually put food coloring in this bottle so the camera can see it a little better. The better an engine runs, the smoother the water will be. But this really doesn't tell you much unless you've seen this trick done on an identical engine that is running the way it's supposed to be. Now if you were looking to buy a used car or truck and saw a cold cylinder like this, that's a red flag that you probably should walk away. But this is a special case. Here is a spark plug pulled out of one of the good cylinders. And here is the one pulled out of the dead back cylinder. Clearly one is not like the other, so in goes a new set.
And here's the same test again after installing the new plugs. Now the four right cylinder, I didn't get much water on this time, but it's enough. This time, the far right cylinder and the two middle cylinders dry almost at the exact same time. And the last cylinder on the far left only takes a second longer, way better than the last time. And here's the water bottle wave test again. The water is almost completely flat. That's what a good running engine should look like. To give you a comparison, here's the same water test run at the same time. Also, since I have both videos running, listen to the difference in the engine sound. First to the four. And then the after. And now for those wondering what I'm working on, here it is. A 1970 Ford C900 fire engine with 750 miles showing. I learned to pump on this truck and helped put out a lot of fires with it before it was retired. And I would rather it stay on the road than end up in a scrapyard.